Good afternoon, everyone. I must say it's a pleasure to be here. Um, the first of its kind happening in Okene. Um, I'm giving credits to the organizers of this event. It's a privilege to be part of everyone. Thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, as you all know, like she just introduced, my name is Usman Adeza Umar. I'm actually a civil engineer by profession. Um, I did my master's in the UK in civil engineering as well. Sorry, I forgot to mention my bachelor's degree was in Federal University of Technology, Mina. Where are the foot Mina, guys? <laughs> so um, while I was doing my master's in the UK, um, I had the opportunity of working in my university as well. That's where um, I sort of delved into educational consultancy and um, travel abroad. So today I'm going to be speaking about um, education in Nigeria and choosing the right career path. The reason I've decided to talk about education is because I believe Education is the root of the problems we have in Nigeria. So I'm going to start with this first question. Where did we get it wrong? I want you guys to think about it for a second and ask yourself, where did we get it wrong in education? I would like to say, the quality of education the average Nigerian acquires and the level of sacrifice it takes to attain it is worrisome. According to UNICEF, one in every five of the world out of school children is in Nigeria. How sad can that be? Over the years, the nation's educational systems has declined tremendously. Education has been one of the top priorities of the previous and the current government. But despite having invested so much in this sector, we are still very much backwards as other countries are way and miles ahead of us. The Nigerian negligence in our educational system has led to poorer tutoring and education. Parents, teachers, stakeholders, and citizens of Nigeria are slowly losing confidence in the educational system. Students are receiving the relevant education to thrive in the, envir in the environment they find themselves. Doesn't change it. Sorry, please. <laughs> Go back. Next, yeah. Yes, okay. Nigeria is still using the old and archaic school curriculum and methods of teaching. Most countries have moved on, and we are still battling with where they left us. So I'd like to ask this question. How many of us did our parents insist we must study medicine, engineering, or law? Can I have the hands up, please? I'm, I'm, I am actually one of them. My dad wanted me to study medicine. When I was in my SS3, I, didn't, I wasn't even sure of what I wanted to study. The reason is because of the, the I had and we all had while growing up. The 
Developed countries have devised a means where children from primary school are already being trained and taken for seminars to get them well equipped and enable them to have a mindset of their own into choosing the right career. In the present world of digital transformation, the ability of workers to compete is handicapped by of the educational systems in developed countries due to technological advancements. Technology plays a huge role if only we can expand our opportunities using e-learning, it will bridge the gap. As advanced countries invest technology in education, students do not struggle to complete their education. Considering during this coronavirus, a lot of private institutions were able to carry out their lessons online. A lot of schools outside of Nigeria, in the UK and the US as well, were able to continue with the we are able to continue with the school calendar use, um, using the online platform. But it's so sad that most of the Nigerian, let me say, government institutions, including primary all the way to secondary, university level, were closed. Either due to ASU strike or due to the fact that we've not been exposed to technological advancements. A society that makes education its top priority, as education will be the catalyst to lead the country out of its reoccurring problems. Take for instance, how many of us were taught, how many of us know that the national pledge is an oath of allegiance? Right from our primary school days, we were taught on how to say the National Pledge. But apparently, most of us have not reflected on the actual meanings of the pledge, neither have we practiced it. Take a deep breath. Now, now I want you guys to Listen to these words carefully. I pledge to, my, I pledge to Nigeria, my country, to be faithful, loyal, and honest. To serve Nigeria with all my strength. To defend her unity and uphold her honor and glory. So help me God. So I want you guys to concentrate on the key words. Faithful, loyal, and honest. So imagine that we were all faithful, loyal, and honest as we serve Nigeria. Do you think Nigeria will be faced with the challenges we are currently being faced with? Fuck. No. So now, you find out that most of other countries, when you, see, when you listen to their nationals, say the national anthem, you can see the connection. You can, you can see how they feel about reciting their national anthem and how they get emotional. But in our own case, our parents and teachers failed to help us when we were growing up, right from nursery to primary school. We weren't taught on how to love our neighbors irrespective of their tribes or their religion. When at the early childhood stage, we do not harness education, when the brain is at its full capacity, we lose them at early stage and it becomes a slippery slope. That's why we see secondary school and even university students that can't even read and write. Our teachers aren't even trained to recognize a school or a special child. 
Our children are just put in class. It's, you can't even tell if a student has a problem from home, but you need to see how the teacher and the student connection is in the UK. It's very easy for you to tell because everybody, every human has its brain capacity and its learning capacity. So you find out that you hardly find students that fail. But in our own country, lecturers are even happy to tell you that you are going to fail this my exam, which is so wrong. You understand? It's so wrong. So I really don't know where we are heading in this country. We need the right tools, the right curriculum, the right teachers. And that determines the kind of teacher you bring to train your child. The easiest way, there is a saying that the easiest way to break the shackles of poverty is through education. Therefore, it is our responsibility to ensure that every child has access to basic quality education. On a lighter note, I'm going to leave you guys with this question. Where do we go from here? Thank you.